All right, here we go. Um, so this last week has been pretty good. Um, finally got over this the hump of like the initial information that was being asked um, in the trainings. Um, I don't know why I was having such a hard time with IPv4 and stuff like that. Once it finally clicked though, I think it's just lining things up enough that uh, it's no longer a problem so I can understand it. Now that I've gotten over that hump, um, everything else is just falling into place. Um, it's more stuff that I'm familiar with and it's a lot easier to understand. Um, this last week I've been really, uh, they've, I've been going over some of the switching concepts. Uh, it's a four-parter so that means it's two hours worth of just beating it to death. Um, and then and I guess going over the difference between a hub and a switch. Um, the next part after this is going to be router, what routers do on top of that. Um, so that's going to be interesting to get into. Um, basically, the it's, it's really been interesting because I, I had a very good f foundation of understanding what, what the difference between the two were. were. Um, it's just more just putting the words behind it, I guess, um, and the definitions of why they're doing these things um, and why you might run into problems when uh, creating these items. Um, yeah, and how to prevent, and I think the thing that they're going to focus on after giving you the initial information is some of the tips and tricks on how to prevent things like uh, um, Mac flooding and things like that. Uh, Mac flooding is where because since each switch has keeps track of the MAC addresses so that it can distinctly send the packets and stuff to the destination a lot faster, that way uh, basically you can get off the phone essentially um, uh, faster so that you'd have less traffic happening and um, therefore less stress happening on the switch by sending it directly. Because um, uh, for instance, like my network here, I have... Um, I think I have a switch down in the basement. I'm doubting it's a hub because our internet's pretty decent. Um, I believe I have a switch in the basement that's an eight port switch um, with gigabit um, ports. And then I have a main router. Um, and then up in my room, I have a I have a router that I'm using as more like a switch um, just because it has e uh, ethernet ports. And then it also has um, a Wi-Fi capacity too, which is nice because um, then I can connect my devices directly to it and I can modify my own router specifically um, since I'm living um, with my parents right now. Um, mostly just because, you know, rent's expensive and i got to get through school. Um, but yeah, um, it's interesting to be able to just set up um, like domain controllers on my own router. Um, I set up my... Um, it's not plugged in right now just because I was playing with some other stuff like uh, Sambas and stuff, but my I have a Raspberry Pi that I'm using as my DNS controller because of the Pi hole to basically have a router-based ad blocker. Um, the w DDWRT open source software actually um, has a feature in there for ad blocking automatically, but the uh, the uh, router I'm using right now isn't compatible with it, which is sad. Um, my Asus router that I do have, I've been using it for just as a test bed, um, so I don't have it plugged in all the time just because the uh, WAN port's broken. Um, so I'm gonna be, I have that set up for all those features and uh, going through that, that's been pretty fun. So once I get through the routering part of the trainings, I think I'm gonna go back into my router, my uh, Asus router and dig through some of the WWRT or the WRT settings and seeing how um, make, just validating all the different settings and stuff like the VLAN and stuff like that which has been I have a general understanding but we'll get there um, yeah I've got I'll show you um, I've got like three pages of notes right now of just all the different uh, things they've been talking about um, on the switches and the hubs and things like that um, and some of the concepts I need to look up, possibly research a little bit more. Um, I've gotten tons of notes of things. I just like, they're explaining it and I understand generally, but I'd be interested in learning more about it and understanding how it functions. Um, yeah, and like how, how you could penetrate into it. It's really, I'm, I'm looking at it from as a cybersecurity standpoint um, of 
how do we prevent the uh, an attack on you know mm-hmm. back flooding how do we prevent a uh, attack on open ports that might be open how do you view those open ports how do you how would you go about closing those open ports um yeah, I, I, I'm. That's why I'm taking it from a cybersecurity perspective, because that's usually what a company's going to be looking for, anyways. Um, so when I'm learning this stuff, I'm like, okay, how is this going to get broken? One, and two, how would how would I attack it? How would somebody else attack it possibly? And that's kind of the things that are intriguing me the most with all this. Um, so I'm going to be going pretty hard uh, hard on this um, stuff. Um, so there, I'm on the inter- interpret Ethernet frame formats. Um, it's pretty basic stuff, and basically just the first few bytes of data is like, hey, is this mine? No, okay, dump it. Um, and then with the the switch, it's uh, sorry, I'm tired. Um, sometimes you'll have a switch and a router, which is my case. Um, the router basically just is the brains of the unit, and then um, the switch will go. Is this data relevant on my ports? If not, then pass it off to the router and the router will figure it out from there. Um, problem with that sometimes is the broadcast part of it, but I think the way the switch is set up is it's able to help um, prevent broadcasts from just happening all the time. Um, uh, the other thing I thought was interesting is that there was an aging timer of 300 seconds. He didn't cover a way to just tell the switch to just refresh its Mac table, but um, they did show us how to change that into a much smaller de- denomination, which would make sense if you're trying to test like 100 devices all on the same switch for some reason and just see if they're actually showing up, making sure they're actually working. Um, so that would make sense. I, I think it was, I got a good foundational knowledge before I started because I started reading the, um, the Network Plus book. I read the first few chapters of it and it gave me a, Good under, general understanding of a lot of these things that he's going into. So um, I think it was right for me to switch, not, not read through the entire um, networking book, just because it's um, going to be basically the same stuff as the Cisco. Um, the Cisco j- just goes into stuff in a lot more depth, and it's a lot more uh, solidifies a lot of the stuff I had questions about, I guess. Um, so yeah, anyways, this is just my update of what I'm doing this week. Um, switching is great. Um, I mean, it's really amazing how they, um, how they took a lot of these concepts and, uh, how they probably formulated them at the very beginning, you know, when computers were actually slow and, uh, route networking and stuff was expensive and just barely being made, you know, they... Um, one of the really cool things that I'm finding is uh, Cisco products, um, they try to go with a hardware solution over a software. So like with firewalls and stuff, they uh, build it in the hardware itself so that it's more robust um, and less strain on like the CPU and stuff. And so it's not as computationally, it's not as, uh, as difficult for it to understand and stuff like that. Um, I'm not sure how they would uh, do updates on that kind of stuff necessarily, but um, I'll eventually figure that part out. Um, I think that's why it's interesting to see what Cisco's doing with their new AI stuff is they're actually having basically a domain controller that's going to be able to find the best routing solutions for the, everybody's network, you know, on an app-to-app basis even. Um, like, hey, you need to go through X, Y, and Z to get the uh, most direct pipe for, you know, Microsoft Cloud, so you're not having any bottleneck, the least amount of bottlenecks that are, are going to be possible. Um, so I'm really interested, to, after I'm done with the Cisco stuff, to dive into how Microsoft's doing things. I know Microsoft's been uh, lately been really pairing up with other companies to make sure that their products are... Um, valid, I guess is the word I'd still use, like uh, so teaming up with uh, Google for Android and stuff like that, um, making sure that uh, everybody's on the same page and making sure they're making the best product to be put out there so that it's most compatible with most devices, um, which I think is great. And, um, better communication is makes everybody's lives easier. Um, does open up for more possible vulnerabilities, of course, so that's something you always have to look at. Um, I think Cisco's engineering team is doing 
some crazy stuff um, on their end to make sure that they aren't becoming vulnerable in there. I think they're, it's really good that they're changing up their training. And when I was looking through their new training, they're going to be starting in February. Um, AI is going to be a huge part of it. And I think that's really smart. Once it becomes developed enough, I'm not sure how far in the development process they are, but um, we can't be awake 24 seven, but the uh, guys trying to penetrate your system is, are awake 24 seven. So um, I think it's good that we're having AI to be able to just go full force and like make sure that it's interpreting the uh, data that's coming through and making sure that it's um, safe and uh, not going to cause us problems. So, anyways, I'm going to continue on my journey of the uh, the very basics and the hardware. Um, I'm thinking I'm going to have to upgrade my subscription for IT Pro TV to the um, for the labs part of it, um, just because I don't have a different box myself to, to test with. I think that'll be good to be able to just go in there every day. Once I'm done with this, I'm thinking I'm gonna spend at least a couple times a week um, just redoing some of the labs and just going through that motions. Um, I'm not sure if I'm gonna be start reading through the textbook just yet. Um, I think jumping up once I'm done with Cisco and understand it, uh, at least from a general sense and a high level sense, um, I'm gonna switch over to the Active Directory and Microsoft Server products. Um, because that way I have a complete foundation um, and then go back and spend the extra 20 or 40 hours it's going to take for me to fine tune my understanding of Cisco products. Because um, that way if I end up getting a job soon, um, I'll have that capacity to, uh, uh, I'll have that capacity to at least have a general sense I'm not completely drowning throughout the entire process. Um, I think I'm a lot he farther ahead than I than I realized, which is good. Um, I'm at least I, I understand everything, and I um, it's just a matter of memorizing it all, and it's, that's a lot of memorization. I I, I've, I think that's my biggest concern is just making sure I understand um, the command lines that are needed, um, and just knowing it quick enough that I don't have to fumble. When I, when, I, when I finally do get to the test, because um, it's just a lot of information to compound. Um, for instance, my Google Drive, let's see. Yeah. Um, got like one, two, three, six, twelve. I've got about 20 different documents I've already, of just notes of different sections and stuff, and then I have to go through and make sure I understand it. Um, I think I'm doing pretty good though, overall. Um, I'm a lot more confident now that I took some time to actually get some more fundamentals. I found some stuff like on YouTube to bring a lot of that stuff out. And, um, I think it's going to be good. Um, there's a lot of great information. Um, out there that I'm gonna I'm diving into right now and I'm excited for um, so anyways I'm gonna let that off here um, and see how things go um, but anyways it was good talking with you um, see if I can get some more information um, more detailed information I'm gonna see if I can make some more blog stuff but um, I'm not seeing anything I want to particularly write about just yet because that's it's still so fresh to me or new. Um, I haven't found anything that intrigues me enough that I want to actually teach it. Um, so I'll look through that and see what I can do. I just need to take a step back and then think about it and then place something out there. Um, yeah, we'll see how that goes. But anyways, you guys have a great day. And just, um, probably put out another update next week. Um, you have a good day.